place. We want to say thank you for what you do in our midst, what you have done, what you're about to do. I commit the ministry of the Word of God afresh into your hands. I ask and I pray for a fresh anointing to rest upon your people to hear and receive your word today. I ask and pray, Lord, you think through my thoughts, speak through my vocal cords once again. Take full control of the ministry of your word. Let revelation knowledge flow onto every one of us individually and collectively. Father, as your will is done in heaven perfectly, let it be done in our midst, in our lives, in the lives of your people. Yes. Quicken your word and make it real and relevant to every one of us. So I commit the ministry of the word of God into your hands. And I thank you, you're always confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. I pray Jesus will be exalted and glorified and magnified in our midst even now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In Luke chapter uh, 21, uh, Jesus is talking about the signs of the end. And in verse 25, I'm reading for a few verses, you can follow with me. He says, um, this is Luke chapter 21, verse 25. There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations and perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers of heaven are about to be shaken. Hallelujah. Amen. And what's going to first trigger that off is the removal of the church. Because really it's the beginning of the end. Amen. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Our redemption is drawing nigh, saints. Those of you with us on Tuesday night's Bible study, you saw that video. Uh, the video of the, the constellation Virgo. Mm -hmm. We see what is going to happen next month. Sorry, this month. Here we are. We're here already. Mm -hmm. We see what's going to happen around the Feast of Trumpets. We see how surrounding that constellation is all these asteroids and comets. I'm assuming those of you who were with us on Tuesday and you understand the video. I hope you understand it. And if you didn't, you can go look and take time and go through it. But God is saying in his word, as he says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. I just go back to that verse, just a reminder. Because some people get, when he start talking about the stars and the heavens and the constellations, some people get a bit weird and they don't understand what the Word of God says, and then they dismiss, and they close down, and they don't hear what God is saying. But I want you to know, saints, the stars up there, the sun and the moon, and how they're arranged, and all that's going on there, God ordained it. God created it. For a reason, for a purpose. And the Word of God tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, it said, and God said, let there be lights in the in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, that's one, mm -hmm. for seasons, that's another, for days, another, and for years. Mm -hmm. That's what they're there for. Very clear. They're there for signs, seasons, days, and years. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. We won't stay on this verse, but if we were to for a moment, if you were to look at these words, you'll see that when it talks about signs and seasons and days and years, you'll see that it's also referring to the appointed times. What appointed times? God's appointed times. You see these are uh, biblical feasts that um, uh, we've been endeavoring to observe. Mm -hmm. Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, which is, not, which is uh, two weekends from now. Mm -hmm. Yom Kippur, that's Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, guess what? It's all there. They're there to let us know when these times come. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Glory to God. But my intent is not to focus on this verse, but I'm just saying, I'm just wanting you to see, just remind you that God created them there for a reason, for a purpose. They're there for science. Science point to things. If you're traveling down a road and the road is washed out, you might see a sign or you might see a sign a mile or two a while it says construction ahead. Yeah. Well, it's warning you that, you know, in a mile or two, you're going to find construction or it could be road is washed out True, sir. or you're coming to a cliff. Mm -hmm. The sign comes before the actual thing. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that. Signs point to things. Do you see? And I don't know if you understand what Pastor Fair was sharing with you today, but uh, you need to know something. Those who have a, a calling for the prophetic ministry, mm -hmm. they have a different language altogether. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let me just put it this way. This is not to offend them or anybody, but to the normal people, they seem weird. Mm -hmm. Their language is weird. Their thinking is weird yes. compared to normal people. Because they're seeing things differently. They see something in something. And they recognize God is speaking through them through things. Where most average people go buy a lot of stuff and they're not, it doesn't mean a thing to them. See, this is just a microphone, that's all. It falls to the ground, big deal. You know what? A, prof a prophet, a prophetess is going to say, okay, why did that thing fall to the ground? And then they start analyzing it. That's when God starts speaking. It fell to the ground, not because of gravity. Yes, gravity is at work, but here's another reason it's going on. You hear me, saints? Mm -hmm. If we learn to appreciate how prophets, prophetesses think or how they see things, it will help you in your spiritual walk too. Because some of you have a prophetic calling, you may not even realize it. Amen. I don't know if you hear me today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And you need to know how God works, His language, how He operates. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, and you see it all through the scriptures. Some people, in this, these days, people are quick to want to sign up to be want to be a prophet or a prophetess, but back in the olden days, they, they weren't so quick. <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> I mean, look for a moment. Isaiah, did he not go naked? <laughs> Ezekiel too? Yeah. I mean, this is weirdness, right? Like, they're, they're, asked to, they're called to do strange things. And then when people inquire, then God says, when the people inquire, then tell them this is what, it's, this is what it means. You're also going to be stripped naked and go into captivity. Come on, sir. This is what's going to happen to yeah. you. You know, that they play it out ahead of time. And then when people, who, those who are pure enough to ask, well, why are you going around naked? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Well, because it's going to happen to you. So I'm just for telling you, I, I'm giving you an object lesson of what is going to come if you keep going in direction, if you don't repent. So they see some things quite differently. So we have to appreciate that. Take time to appreciate it. All right? You might marry one. Then what? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what does the scripture say in verse 25? It says, and there shall be what? Signs and in the where? The sun. Where? In the moon. Where? In the stars. Where? Upon the earth. It's telling you where the signs are going to be. So first of all, if you're aware that the signs are going to be in these locations, you want to be a bit more open and receptive to hear what God is saying so that when they do come, you say, okay, that's God speaking. Amen. God is, God is, God is attempting to communicate to me. And it's not always in English. Or your native language, whatever that language happens to be. True. Okay? He can use objects, things, things, things that just occur. Yeah. You open up the cupboard and a dish falls out, smashes to the floor, smashes to smithereens. And you wonder, whoa, what's going on? And you say, oh, well, somebody put the dish in the wrong way. They didn't take time to put it in properly. Maybe they did, but there's more, there could be very well more to it. Maybe, have you ever stopped to think sometimes that, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm going off beat for a moment, but something just broke in your life. 
Come on, sir. Something evil that maybe was going on, the enemy was at work, and God is indicating to you this thing that you've been going through, boom, it's been smashed to pieces, and now you're free. But some people go off and think, oh no, this thing is broken, there's nothing more to it. Saints, God wants us to start to see and think the way he sees and thinks. Okay? We've got to go beyond what we normally do. Because he's operating in different realms. Yes. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God uses the sun, the moon, the stars to speak. So a, bit brief, a brief recap. Remember Psalm 19? Just to remind you. Psalm 19 reads like this, the first few verses. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech. Night unto night showeth knowledge. They're always speaking, 24 by 7. Even now they're speaking. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. For their speech, for there is no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Oh, glory to God. God is using them to speak constantly. Amen. To communicate constantly. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, um, those of you who saw the video, you saw there was a lot of asteroids around the, the constellation of Virgo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when, I went, when we had our um, end time forum on uh, Wednesday evening, we just took time to go to Stellarium and just see for some, you know, just see. And uh, brought the Constellation Virgo, you can do the same for you if you want to, if you choose to, which is of, is if this is of any interest to you. And you can see exactly today's date or whatever date you want. You can go forward or you can go backwards. And you can see where, what goes on, what happens. So we fast forward to the Feast of Trumpets, you know, which starts uh, September 15th, the eve of September 15th, all day September 16th. The Jews like to go for two days because of international. But nevertheless, it's all day, the first day on the 16th, which is Saturday. It starts Friday night. So just fast forward it. And you can see the, the various asteroids around. We just put some names in. Um, one of them is Laban. Do you remember him? Yeah. You remember what he did to Jacob? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guess what? There's an asteroid around the Virgo around that time. Leah, pop that in. Guess what? There's an asteroid called Leah. These are not by chance, saints. Okay. This is not by chance. Pop to Elijah. Mm -hmm. I think on the video it showed Elijah, but I want to see for, we want to see for ourselves. Right? Elijah is at the foot. Put in Yeshua, which the video showed. Right? And again, I'm, I'm talking, I'm assuming that you saw the video. Um, Yeshua, there's, there's Yeshua at the, uh, you know, at the feet, too. Uh, 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 you can see where the sun is. You can see where the moon is. The sun was uh, at the head where the woman is. As Revelation chapter 12 says, She's closed with the sun. You can see uh, in the video, he said, child. He said, God just spoke to him. Put in the word child and see what it is. He said, no way, it can't be. Well, sure enough, when he did, there was a child in the womb. You know, I popped it in, and there it is too. You know, sometimes you want to validate some things. Yeah. And, um, um, and, and remember, there's the, that one comment, just a quick recap, called uh, Nish, Nishamoru, which means exalted man child. Sure enough, it's there too. And what's unique about that particular comment is sitting out there for eons, idle. Seems like it's doing nothing from our perspective, from Earth's perspective. Suddenly the thing wakes up. When? In February of this year. And it starts moving. And it's, it's on a journey. And it passes through the Virgos constellation. When? Days after the Feast of Trumpets. During the days of awe. You know, you know those 10 days? Mm -hmm. Between the Feast of Trumpets and uh, uh, Day of Atonement? It passes through, lights up the whole thing, and then it goes out into like nowhere land, so to speak, and just sits there. And you have to ask yourself, well, what's that all about? God is speaking. He's letting you know something is up. Something is up. Saints. And um, you can see all this for yourself. You, there's a, a comment, sorry, there's an asteroid called Francis. And, and some of these are prophetic. A lot of them are prophetic. Well, we happen to know that there's some, a, a prominent leader in the world in the religious circles called what? 
Pope Francis, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds like he's got a role to play in the days to come. I'm telling him. Right? <laughs> I, I saw one called Heredia, Herodias. Remember her? Mm -hmm. You know, John the Baptist got his head cut off because of her. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's telling you things. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you see Laban and Jacob and all this kind of stuff, he's telling you, you know what? Israel's heading for some trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, problems are coming. Mm -hmm. and they're all signs, saints. And, and as I was sharing with you before, I mean, if you go back in time, these asteroids are not there. They're not there. It's not like they're just there all the time. They're not there. But they show up because we're in that time season. The Earth, we belong to a, we, we, we belong to a solar system, you know, called the Milky Way. And we're, we, we, the Earth, is moving around the Sun. The solar system we're in, it's also moving. So it's moving to around this great big huge black hole way out there. So we are moving around the sun and our whole solar system is moving in motion. And according to scientists, those who are willing to tell the truth, we have moved in and into this asteroid belt where, we're gonna, where it's gonna get more and more and more. To the point, I heard this past week, where they're no longer gonna, they're changing the names how they call these things. They're calling them, um, oh, I don't have my notes in front of me, but maybe I'll share with you tomorrow. Where they, call, where they used to call them like um, uh, near, near objects coming close to the earth, they've rearranged the names so that it doesn't sound so, so awful. Because now we're coming to a, dense, a denseness of it. And what's going to start to happen in more and more in the weeks to come, they're going to come, start coming through and start hitting earth. And uh, causing all kinds of problems. And these small ones, they're so small they can't see them. Like they can't pick them up. But it's going to cause more and more problems. Yes. So, God knew that we would be, at a certain time in man's history, that the Earth and the solar system would be in this region of space where Revelation talks about stars will be falling from the heaven. Mm -hmm. Judgment will be coming on planet yeah. Earth. Yeah. God knew that at a certain time in man's history, that we, we would be, when I say we, mankind, history, Earth, solar system, with a certain region in space where judgment will be coming. Mm -hmm. And therefore we read in the book of Revelation, stars falling from the heavens mm -hmm. onto earth. Yeah. Wormwood put in the water, mm -hmm. causing it to become bitter, and men dying of it. And, and these things, this is, what the, this is the time frame we're moving into, yeah. saints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if anybody tells you that the tri tribulation is not on the horizon, they do not know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful that we don't allow anybody to talk you out of the, the truth that the Bible is revealing. True. So we just read in, in, in Luke where Jesus himself said, and there shall be what? Signs. Where? In the sun? In the moon? Oh, oh let me just back up. The scientists are saying, um, there was a, a, a CME that was released a, a, a couple days ago from the sun because of what's going on, the heavenly bodies. It's going to hit the earth. I think today or tomorrow or whatever. And you know, sometimes you see and you read these things, you don't pay too much attention. But I was, I was someplace and somebody said, wow, it's gonna be super hot this Sunday. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, it out one ear, out the next. Then I listened to this uh, scientist talking about what happened in the sun a couple of days ago. I said, oh, that's what's gonna be happening. Mm -hmm. Things are happening in science. Mm -hmm. Simple things that we would go by, many people go through tomorrow, over the weekend, I think nothing of it. It's a nice long weekend. Yes, let's enjoy it. But something else. But there's a reason for it. And I have no idea. It's all because of certain things that are happening out there that are not necessarily good. That's leading to problematic judgment things. Are you catching the sense? Mm -hmm. I hope you are. Hallelujah. We were here a couple of services ago. And we're back here. We're circling back. Revelation chapter 12. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Amen. The Bible says here, and there was appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. Let's pause here for a moment. This is the constellation of Virgo saints. All right? Okay. The woman clothed with the sun. And if you saw the video, you'll have a better understanding. Okay? And so in other words, at a head, the sun is at that position. All right? 
and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Well, when you read verse one, now that we know what we know, you can put in the side of your Bible if you want, make a note, Feast of Trumpets. Why? Because this only happens once a year. Where the sun, let, let me read the first part of verse one. He says, and there appeared a great one in heaven and a woman clothed with the sun. The woman is clothed with the sun every year at the first of Tishri or Feast of Trumpets. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. Every year that happens. But he goes on to say, he says, and the moon at her feet, which is true, and upon her head were a crown of 12 stars. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. She does not crown with 12 stars all the time. The last time this happened was 2017. Mm -hmm. And the last time prior to that, it, when it happened, according to those who study these things, it happened at around the time of the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you're all catching this. This is a, what we're reading about this, the, her head crowned with 12 stars is a rare occasion. The first part of the verse happens every year at Feast of Trumpets. Yes. But having been crowned with 12 stars doesn't happen all the time. It happened in 2017. Mm -hmm. And those of you with us, we took note of that. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people, those who were following this thought, that's when Jesus would come for the church. Mm -hmm. We now, know, we can look back and we can see, no, but it's a sign letting us know he is coming. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Glory. Right? Because mm -hmm. often when you see signs, you see signs ahead of an event. True, you yes. see a signs ahead of whatever. If it's construction, they don't wait until you arrive at a construction site to give you the sign. They'll let you know ahead of time. True. If the road is washed out, they give you a sign ahead of time. They don't wait until when you you almost going into it to let you know, hey, you just, the road is washed out. They'll let you know ahead of time so you're forewarned. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay, so this took place in 2017 to let us know the planets came together and crowned the woman at 2017. The last time was at the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. wow. For those who follow this, for those who study this, they can go back and see when it happened. Okay. And the scripture says, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Right? So she's getting ready to give birth. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and God has a way of communicating in such a way that um, the Word of God can present prophecy, but it can be more than one prophecy in it. All right? So the scripture says here that. Um, let me just continue reading in verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a red dragon having seven heads ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and these are not literal stars these are angelic these are angels when it talks this okay mm -hmm. all right in this part and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand what it's saying, right? Okay, and we can see that um, the woman is pregnant, she's about to give birth, and the enemy wants to get in the way to devour the child. Mm -hmm. We see this play out twofold. The woman represents, in one prophetic sense, Mary. The woman represents, in another prophetic sense, the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. We know that when Mary was pregnant with Jesus and she gave birth, if you can recall the Gospels, immediately as soon as Herod found out that the, uh, the king of the Jews had been born, he found out two years later, what did he want to do? He wanted to destroy him, did he not? Yes? yes. yes? yes. yes. 
And he wasn't aware that the king of the Jews had been born until the wise men came. How did the wise men know? They saw his star. That's what the Bible tells us. Okay? The religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, who should have known, who should have been in tune, who should have been aware that the king of the Jews had been born were totally clued out. Mm -hmm. And now I could see them being clued out initially, but two years had come and gone and they're still clued out. They still didn't get it. Two years later, the wise men arrive and they, and they arrive and said, where is the king of the Jews? We've come to worship him. And it's caused a big stir in Jerusalem. And so what king of the Jews? Herod's the king. There is no other king. No, we've come to worship the king of the Jews. How is it that we know the king of the Jews have been born and you don't even know your own king has been born? So when that was very disturbing, so when they went and searched the scriptures and they went and they did several things and, and, and Herod made an inquiry, the Bible tells us that he realized that the king of the Jews had been born two, at least for two years. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. Right? Again, how did the wise men knew? They, 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 they saw his star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And according to some Bible scholars, how did they know? How did the wise men know to look for his stars? Apparently, way back when, when Daniel was in Babylon and in Persia, and remember the position he had? Remember, he was in charge of all the Chaldeans. He was in charge of all the magicians. He was in charge of all of those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He taught them what to look for. So years later, hundreds of years later, when the time came, they passed that knowledge down. They kept looking, they kept looking, they kept looking, they kept looking, and a time came when they saw his star. star. Yes. Mm -hmm. They knew what to look for because that is believed Daniel is the one that taught them what to look for. They passed that knowledge down, 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 all throughout the generations. And they kept it. And they looked. And yet the people of God, the Jewish people who should have known, who should have been aware, wasn't, did not know. When the birth of Christ occurred, who did God speak to? The Bible says God used the angelic and angels to announce it. Nobody knew. But the angels announced it. To who? The shepherds. Mm -hmm. The nobodies. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. It wasn't to the priests. Mm -hmm. They were aware that the Messiah had been born. They went and saw him. They said, this will be a sign. You'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. They knew when they saw the baby in the manger, this is the right one. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Eight Hallelujah. days later, when Moses, sorry, when Mary, and Joseph took Jesus, the young baby, to the temple to be circumcised. The prophetess Anna knew. The, 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 the man of God called Simeon also knew. But it seems like nobody else was aware of what was going on. And then two years later, there's a big stir because the wise men have showed up because they come with an entourage. We've come to worship the king of the Jews. It got a lot of attention. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So, this, so the verse 5, it says, And she brought forth... Okay, let me just back, back up. In, in verse 4, it says that the, the, the tail the drew a third of the parts of the, of the stars. And, and I said, those are not the literal stars. Those are angelics. Those are fallen angels. So we know a third of the angels rebelled against God. Yeah. Right? And... They get cast down when Satan gets cast down out of the second heavens. And it says, and, and it stands before her child. Now, what's interesting, when you look up the word, this word, child, we can see like where the prophecy is beginning to split. So you can see there's, there's two prophecies here. This word child is not a single. Which is, uh, which, 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 which is kind of interesting. It says, it says here in King James, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We know that played out when Jesus was born. Do we not? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. And yet it's prophetic for future. Yes. What is going to come. Yes. And uh, Jesus' life was threatened. So Jesus spoke to the father, Joseph, and says, you need to leave. Get out of here. As soon as the wise men arrived, you leave. And he did leave. And uh, 
Joseph and Mary, Jesus left and went to Egypt and they stayed there for a period of time. The angel spoke to Joseph in a dream. Get out of here. Leave. Okay? So we know all of that. So that one, that's one aspect of the prophecy, going, looking back. But so we see a birthing, we see a life being threatened, we see the enemy wanting to devour the child, which is, you can see that, the, the child of Mary, Jesus. But now if we, if we look, prof, even from another prophetic point of view, we see Israel birthing a child. Do we not? Yeah. And um, before I go further, the, the, the word here, child, says for to devour her child, it, it seems like it, it is a singular. But when you look at the Greek, it's plural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The same Greek word that is used for to demonstrate a child is plural is the same word that's used in Matthew chapter 2, verse 18. Let me read it to you. In Rama, was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children. You see that plural? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same Greek word. Yeah. And, and would not be comforted because they are not. Here's another one, Matthew chapter 3, verse 9. So you can see how the same word is used. And think not to say, Within yourselves, we have Abraham to our we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able with these stones to raise up children (plural) unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another one is Matthew chapter seven verse eleven. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? The same word is used in Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Meaning, this word is a plural word. Yes. Meaning, as I was sharing with you the other day, it's, it's like, um, the, it's, the Greek word for child is like a community of children. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see how the prophecy now is more through this than what meets the eye? Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, because uh, uh, what happens? Verse five says, and, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. We know who that is, that's Jesus. Mary was the one who brought forth Jesus, did she not? Yes. Israel brought forth Jesus as well, right? Amen. And her child was caught up unto God, which the word caught up here is harpazo. And, and to his throne. If you go back to Acts chapter 2, I mentioned the other day. Uh, Jesus wasn't half positive when he ascended. He ascended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half is it's a snatch. Mm -hmm. To be caught up suddenly. Mm -hmm. To be removed forcefully. So the scripture is telling us that her child, the, the community of children, now you can see it prophetically, is, is like the church. Yes. I hope you are catching this. Okay, it is it's caught up, harpazoed, forcefully removed and caught up into heaven. Yes. So, so, so this is a this is like a double prophecy here. Amen. All right. Yes, sir. You can see it from Mary giving birth to Jesus, and the enemy wants to kill Jesus, and you can also see it as Israel giving birth to uh, Jesus, birthing Jesus, and and the and the child being caught up, how puzzled, because we are his body. He's the head and we're, the, we're members of his body. I'm talking about the church. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I hope you can see this prophecy. It's kind of like a double prophecy. All right? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so we see the child being caught up and now we're seeing his plural community of children and we can see now it's the, it's the church happening here oh, and, and we know it's not necessarily Jesus because we know Jesus ascended he wasn't a puzzled 
So it's so we can see that how the prophecy is split in, so we can see the difference. Mm -hmm. How there's more than one thing going on here. Amen. Okay, it, 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 it's, a, it's a language of God. Again, back to what I was saying before, as Pastor Phil was saying, we've got to learn to see beyond. Mm -hmm. Right? Because with, with, prophetic language is different from normal language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, hallelujah. Let me just reiterate. The woman gives birth as Mary to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Israel gives birth to, to Jesus to the church, right? Mm -hmm. When the rapture takes place, what's going to be happening? There's going to be a birthing. We are going to be birthed out of this world. Mm -hmm. Glory. And if you can see that, yeah. mm -hmm. it really is a birthing. And this is what it's telling us. There's a birthing taking place and we're being birthed out before the tribulation mm -hmm. starts. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? <coughs> Hallelujah. How do we know that? Well, let's just start with some other scriptures. Okay? If you... Just bear with me uh, for a moment. We can go to Isaiah chapter 66. Go there with me. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 66. And I'll read several verses here. I'm going to be reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 66. All glory to God. We're going to see that Israel gives birth to her child or children before the rapture takes, before the tribulation comes. Mm -hmm. All right? How, how could that be? Well, when we go to Isaiah chapter 66, it's going to help us to understand the, the, how, the, how to understand the prophecy it says here in verse 7 before she travailed she brought forth before her pain okay came she was delivered of a man child come on sir okay okay thank you lord let, let me just read it again okay before she labored, she gave birth. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. The modern English, King James says she brought forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Before she labored, she gave birth. King James says, before she labored, she brought forth. Same thing. Before what? Her pain. Before her pain. Before tribulation. tribulation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Before her, her pain came. Israel gives birth before her pain comes. Before tribulation. Before tribulation. Yes. Okay. Normally, women, when they give birth, that's when the pain comes. Mm -hmm. She's going to give birth before her pain comes. Glory okay. To God. It says here, and uh, uh, let me just, could you read it in verse 8? Who has heard such a thing? Mm -hmm. Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Mm -hmm. Well, again, okay, we're going to another prophecy here because we know Israel was born in a day, wasn't it? Yeah. Right? But, but, but that's not our focus for today. Okay? Or, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Yeah. Here it's plural. Mm -hmm. She, uh, shall, I, shall I bring to birth? And not cause to bring forth, says the Lord. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, says thy God? Mm -hmm. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her constellations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Yes. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall 
Isaac. He shall be born upon her sides and be dangled upon her knees. The last verse. And as, and as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. And ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. It's prophesied in, in, in the book of Isaiah. Israel shall give birth before she goes in travail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The woman shall give birth before she goes into pain. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before Jacob's trouble comes, she will give birth. Praise the Lord. Okay, you say, well, what is Jacob's trouble? That's the seven years of tribulation. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right? So that you can even get a better understanding, let's go to Leviticus chapter 12. Go backwards a bit. I trust that you're following me and you're staying with me so you can understand this. Leviticus chapter 12 tells us something that's profound and, in, and yet you can see the pro prophecy in it. Because the Bible says all scripture is prophecy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen to what it says here in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then, shall, then, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of her separations for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. Saints, can you see this? Seven days translates into what? Seven years. Yes. Seven years, Israel is going to be unclean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After the church has been birthed out, mm -hmm. out of this earth, mm -hmm. Israel will now be unclean for what? Seven, seven years. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven years of what? Tribulation. Yeah. The last three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation. It's at the end of the seven years is when Israel is cleansed, mm -hmm. right? It's at the, you know, three and a half years into it, a lot of people are going to realize, the Jews are going to realize the Antichrist that's in the temple, that's desecrated the temple, that's polluted the temple, that's polluted the sacrifices, he is not the real Messiah. Yeah. At the beginning of the seven years, they accept him as their Messiah. Mm -hmm. Three and a half years, they realize he's not the Messiah and some will repent. Remember, for the first three and a half years, we've got the two witnesses mm -hmm. preaching. You see that in the early chapters of, um, in, uh, uh, in, well, around chapter 11, 10, God uses the olive branches, two witnesses, to preach the gospel. Yes. Now, a lot of Bible people say, pastors say, it's Moses and Elijah. I beg to differ. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it's appointed unto man once to die, after that, the judgment. There are only two people in the Bible that did not taste of death. One is Elijah. The other one is Enoch. And I firmly believe according to the scriptures, it's Enoch and Elijah. Not Moses. Moses, is not, Moses has died. The Bible clearly tells us he's been buried. Right? And, and even there was a dispute over his body. He's not coming back to die a second time. Mm -hmm. Jesus, if he could, he would come back and go back to the cross a second time to give people a chance. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to. Mm -hmm. It's appointed unto man once to die after the judgment. So I believe the two witnesses are Elijah, yes, and Enoch, two people. We know that Enoch was translated, mm -hmm. was he not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and he never tasted of death. Mm -hmm. And Elijah was caught up and he never was tasted of death. He never tasted of death either. Mm -hmm. The two witnesses are going to come back and preach. Mm -hmm. And when they're preaching, as a result of their preaching, 144,000 Jews are going to convert. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says they're going to be sealed. 12,000 from each tribe, except for one tribe. That's the tribe of Dan. If you read the book of Revelation carefully, you'll see all the 12 tribes except for the tribe of Dan. And it's believed that the tribe of Dan is not there because they're the ones because of their idolatry. So they're replaced by another tribe. 
right? Still with me, sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the birthing takes place. The church is birthed out. That's the rapture. Glory to God. Not long after that, officially, the seven years will, will start. Mm. The covenant will be signed or reaffirmed according to the book of Daniel. All right? The seven years will now start ticking. Because mm -hmm. we've been talking about Daniel's 70th week, haven't we not? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? And uh, uh, the temple will be rebuilt within those first three and a half years. At the end of the three and a half years, the, and I, the, Satan gets kicked out of heaven, the second heaven. All of his angels get kicked out of heaven. How do we know that? Go back to Revelation chapter 12. Let's just see, because this happens halfway through. I know we've been going over this, but it's, it's important for us to understand this. Take the time. And if we're to go over over several times, it's, it's, it's good for us to understand. It says here in... Uh, uh, verse uh, 6 the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days that's one thousand two hundred and sixty days that's three and a half years yeah. this is the last three and a half years and 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 it's believed in the, it's it's somewhere in Petra in the Jordan area where God has arranged for them to hide Verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael the archangel fought against the, the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. That means the dragon, Satan, and the third of those fallen angels, they all get cast down to planet earth. You'll see that in uh, verse, verse, picking up from verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, this is the second heaven, ye that dwell in them, mm -hmm. woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. And when the and when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted who? The woman which brought forth the man child. He goes after Israel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and verse 14 tells us how God makes a place of escape. And if you're really careful, verse 14, it tells you it's, enough, it's three and a half years. Time, times, and, and times and a half. Mm -hmm. Just another way of saying it. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And if you go back to uh, Daniel chapter 12, you'll see that Daniel chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 12, they both go together. Yeah. Okay? And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, mm -hmm. such as n never was since there was a nation even to that time, same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book so everyone who gives a life to Christ in the Jewish people God will keep and preserve them that last three and a half years so at the end of the seven years the end of Israel's uncleanness that's when she becomes clean praise God y'all catching this? Yes. I hope you are glory to God so we, we can see Chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, it's, it, there's more than one thing going on here. And it's prophetic, and it's letting us know what has happened and what is going to happen. So if you're reading it, you can, you, you might, it's easy to get confused, but you can see what I've, I've just taken time, slowly, to kind of explain to you this. There's more than one prophecy going on here. Mm -hmm. And, and um, to, to play out. And to, so again, to summarize, when the rapture takes place, we, the church, were being birthed out of here. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it will happen before Israel goes into labor, into labor pains. Mm -hmm. She'll be in labor pains for seven years. Mm -hmm. wow. She'll be in tribulation for seven years. Okay? Mm -hmm. But she'll give birth before that. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. 
Can you all see this? Yes. Yes. This help you to understand it. I hope it does. Because we're going to keep circling back to these so we can get all better, a better understanding of what's going on in the book of Revelations. Because you notice we keep coming back from time to time. Because we need to. Especially in the times that we're living in, we need to understand what is coming, where we are, and what is going on. Hallelujah. So it's kind of interesting, back to the Virgo constellation, it's got this asteroid called Laban, and asteroid Rachel, and Leah, and all these are surrounding the constellation. So it just lets you know, whoa, what's going on? What is happening? What is going to happen? I think we're in a prophetic time sense. I mean, so I believe we're in a very unique prophetic time. And we wouldn't, and some people would not really realize that until they take time to start studying what's going on up there. Or try taking time to understand what's going on there. Because it now it helps us to realize it's much later than we think. Much later. Because the signs are there whether you want to see it or not. You can drive by a stop sign and choose not to see it. Amen? You can choose not to see what's going on up there. You could choose, you could close your ears and you know, close your eyes and say, I don't want to hear this, I don't want to know anything about it. It doesn't mean to say the sign is not there. It doesn't mean to say that it's not going to play out. It is going to play out whether you're aware of it or not. It's, okay, so God is, communi God is using the heavens to communicate, to signal. And I trust that you're seeing this, I trust that you're understanding this, and I trust that you're understanding the seriousness of the times. And uh, you will not lose sight of the time that we're in, and that you'll keep yourself ready, you'll keep your garment spotless, you will maintain a ready state. The Lord is about to return for His church. Make sure that you're in that number when, it, when He comes, that you're in a ready state to go. Because the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 24, when the bridegroom came up, showed up, some were not ready. Sorry, Matthew chapter 25, five foolish virgins, some were not ready to go in. We need to be ready. Amen? Amen. We need to be ready. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask and pray, Lord, the truth of your words that we've heard today, or we've been hearing lately, you cause them to sink deep into every one of our hearts. Amen. Refresh us. Give us deeper spiritual understanding, deeper understanding. Help us understand, understand the times that we're living in what's about to occur, what is happening, and help us to be all alert, ready and prepared, so that when you do come for the church, every one of us will be counted worthy to escape what's coming and be able to stand before the Son of God and hear you say, well done, my faith, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. Keep us in the way that we should go, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, cause these truths to sink deep into our hearts. Amen.